Hello and today I'm going to talk about how to upgrade the BIOS on a Lenovo laptop. This is the um, Lenovo laptop graveyard behind me and oh that's a circuit diagram for a maritime um, very low frequency navigation receiver which is uh, something I'm going to be looking at. Actually two of them are coming from different manufacturers so uh, that comes in a later video. So what I'm trying to do is update the BIOS and I don't have a battery for these laptops because the battery is all dead and there's one over here and here's the BIOS screen. <clears throat> the main reason for me to update the BIOS is apart from security and microcode and meltdown and everything else because I want in the keyboard and mouse settings to be able to you can already oh, um, swap the function and control key because for me those are in the wrong location on the keyboard I want them the other way around so I swap them in the BIOS and stick labels on to remind myself I've done it and I also want to make the function key priority active, which is actually missing in this BIOS. Um, and the function key active means that when you press a function key, you get the function and not volume increase or brightness decrease or whatever on a laptop. I've updated this BIOS to the very latest version and it's still not there, which is interesting because I've got older BIOSes in those other laptops where the function is there. So I need to look at what happened there. I don't know yet. But the problem is when you go to update the BIOS on a laptop, um, Lenovo, it needs a battery and if it does not detect a battery it'll say to you battery not detected and you're not allowed to update it for obvious reasons because if the power fails during the BIOS update then you you can brick the motherboard and the re recommended fix is to replace the motherboard which of course costs more than the, the cheap second-hand used laptop so that's not an option but I found a way of doing it I just googled it but I think it might be useful just to show you quickly how to convince the Lenovo BIOS update app to do the update even when a battery is not attached. I've ordered a battery, a second-hand battery, because um, I need one anyway. Uh, the problem is if the power goes off or you accidentally pull out the power plug, then of course uh, the, the laptop is sh not even shut down nicely. It's just off. So that's, that's not healthy, especially during a BIOS update. So I'll show you how... I managed to update the BIOS and I did it um, by <clears throat> using the Windows function, the Windows app. So I installed Windows on the laptop, went to the Lenovo website, which I'll show you, and then downloaded the BIOS update, which then refused to update because of the battery issue. So let's see what I did. So you need to go to support.lenovo.com and click on PC, and then you can either search for the type of laptop you have which in this case is a t540p or you can cheat and click on detect my device but then of course it records the serial number on their website and all sorts of diagnostic information which is up to you depending on privacy concerns and you need to then search for bios because there will be a lot of updates the auto updater tool is actually very useful because it installs all of the required drivers if you've just installed windows or, or only windows um, things like um, GPU drivers incredibly important to get the graphics acceleration anyway I just searched for BIOS and then you get the BIOS update utility and bootable CD um, I started doing it the Windows way using the Windows utility and then ran into the problem I thought well let's try making a bootable CD or at least a USB stick instead and you can download the ISO image and then I ran into the problem that I'd forgotten about that if you um, try to use something like Berliner Etcher to burn the ISO image to a USB stick um, it says it's not bootable and then when you try to boot it doesn't and then I remembered um, that in the past when I've had this problem I've actually uh, done it the Linux way which is to on a Linux machine you have to run this uh, get El Torito package to convert the BIOS image into one that's usable and then just you can just use dd the dd command to uh, burn it to the usb stick no need to install any software with linux but i'm trying to stick with windows today so uh, doing it the windows way um failed but when i downloaded the uh, windows um, application for updating the bios of course it uh, copied and downloaded all of the necessary files even though it then said it doesn't want to do it because there's no battery and if you look in the um, file manager 
what you need to do is you have to manually run the update um, software, which I can't see at the moment for some reason. <coughs> Gone off the page. I actually searched for it, and it turns out it's in a hidden directory, of course, because they don't want end users to see this. But what you need to do is you need to use this one here, this winupt tp64.exe. You have to run that with some command line switches to ignore the battery check. Um, so I just searched for that file name. I'll put it in the comments below. You can either search for it and find it, um, or you can try looking here. But you have to remember that this is a hidden directory. So with Windows, well, I can find the cursor. You need to go to the View Options and check this box here that says Hidden Items. I also, of course, check the file name extensions because I want to see those two as well as seeing Hidden Items. You have to turn that on before you can see it. The search will find it when you don't have that switched on, but if you want to uh, go directly to it, it's not so easy. Now, how do I get back? Okay, no, I've forgotten. I'm not, I don't use Windows a lot. <laughs> I'm more of a Linux fan. Anyway, so um, where that file is located is here. Program data slash Lenovo slash system update slash session SE repository. GMUJ35 US is the, um, the version of the BIOS file. And if you look um, in the repository directory, there are a lot of those, so you need to choose the right one. So having located where the file is, you can then go to the Linux com uh, uh, Windows command line. You can press the Windows key on the keyboard and type CMD to get it. Um, I've already got it running here, the Windows command line, command prompt, they call it, which is here. It has no history. I wanted to click up and show you the history of what I typed in, but Windows doesn't do history between boots. Um, so you can't. But what you have to do is enter in there the command that I showed you, which is, you don't need to put the .exe on the end, it's just uh, this. Um, it's moved again. Let's have a look. This one, the big fat one at the bottom, win uptp64.exe. You don't need to type the .exe. And then you put the command line switches minus or ha uh, dash sp lowercase i always use this dash sp which means turn off and ignore the battery check test i'll put that in the comments below as well and that's all you have to do so you just run that command with the right switch and it then starts up the uh, program to update the bios and it actually um, runs through the stages you would expect and it doesn't mention there's no battery connected um, one thing to be very careful of is that if you're going to do this, then you cannot lose power to the laptop while it's updating the BIOS, because if you do, as I already said, you'll brick the motherboard probably, and, and it's ruined. So you, you do this at your own risk. Please don't blame me if you try it and it goes wrong. Um, that's why I like using old laptops, because if it did go wrong, then I can just uh, give up and try another one. To be honest, it's never gone wrong for me. I've never bricked a, a BIOS update on a motherboard, and I've been doing this for probably three decades maybe so um, <laughs> maybe longer but uh, you have to be aware of this no power failure and also don't touch any keys don't do anything be patient and this particular laptop the t540p has to reboot twice so it goes through its whole sequence of looking at the old bios flashing the new one then it says it's going to restart which it does but then don't do anything don't try to use it because then suddenly it says oh i'm going to restart again and then it restarts again and then it starts up and then you can do things with it. So allow it to stop its cycle of restarting. Um, I think some server motherboards actually rebooted three times when I did this with them, um, instead of just two times on this laptop. And then I go into the BIOS settings and I do uh, load setup defaults because it's a nice thing to do after a BIOS upgrade and save that and let it reboot. Um, as I said, the, the function key lock that I was looking for is actually still missing. I'll look at that later. But that's how to upgrade the BIOS with no battery connected. But as I said, do you do this at your own risk? Please don't blame me if it goes wrong. So that's all for the moment. Let's see what happens next. Just to prove that I hadn't imagined it, I'm going to power up another T540P, which has a slightly older BIOS in it, to check in the BIOS if it has that function um, that I'm looking for, the setting to allow the function keys to operate as function keys. So um, here's another T540P, and I'm going to 
switch it on and see what happens. Press enter, press F1. Oh, there is a request to enter a password, which of course I don't have. And this might cause some people to stumble and start guessing passwords. But there is a, in this particular case, there's a, a simple solution, which is to press the enter key and it says that's okay. And then it goes into the BIOS because that was not a BIOS password. That was only a supervisor password. So if we go in and look at the settings, I can change those. But if I look at security settings like password, then these are in fact grayed out. I can't uh, move the cursor to them because they're grayed out. So it's um, the security settings which are locked with a password, but I can still get into the BIOS to change most things. And to be honest, that's fine with me. In the future, I'm going to look at how to get over that by shorting some pins together on a chip as it boots, but not today. So let's go down to the um, settings for the keyboard, config, keyboard and mouse. Ta -da. And here is the thing that I'm looking for, this F1 to F12 as primary function. That's what I want enabled, which it is on this laptop. And function and controls key swap is also enabled because, as I said, I like to have my control key in the corner so I can find it without looking. And um, this F1 to F12 as primary function is missing, it seems, in the very latest BIOS because this is not the very latest, which is from 2021. I think it was version 2.39 or 2.34. We look at this one, which has got the setting that I want. If we go into the main menu, then here this is uh, from 2020 and it's version 2.38. So it's 2.39 that I just installed on the other laptop without a battery. And that setting's missing. And on 2.38 from one year earlier, 2020, it is there. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe I need to roll back the BIOS, but it's best to always have the latest BIOS. And so. Um, I don't know. Let's see what happens next. So thank you for watching. Hope it's useful. And uh, let me know in the comments if you find this useful or you have any suggestions about how to overcome some of the problems that I've noticed. Now, I'm not a person who gives up easily. So um, I wanted to find out <clears throat> what had happened. And it seems that although the setting I wanted for um, allowing the function keys to work as function keys was in BIOS version 2.38, was in, introduced in version 2.19, was taken out again in version 2.39 for some reason and when I googled I couldn't find out why so I asked ChatGPT from OpenAI who told me that um, modern laptop users want to be able to access the sound and brightness and so on settings with the top row keys on the keyboard and they don't want function keys anymore it's a legacy setting so that's why it might have been removed <clears throat> this is what ChatGPT assumed without being able to check because it doesn't have up-to-date internet access yet. So um, the other suggestion was to install the Lenovo Vantage software because you can change it in there as well. Um, so this is Lenovo Vantage. There's my missing battery. <clears throat> it's coming in the post in a few days. And under device settings, apparently you should be able to change that setting under keyboard settings. You can turn off the backlight for the keyboard. But unfortunately on this particular laptop the setting is still missing which would normally appear here I can find on the internet where you can allow the function keys to operate as function keys but I still didn't give up because the simple solution to the problem is to use the function lock feature which is this function lock here which makes this light come on here so to do that you just press function and then function lock but remember I've swapped these so I have to press control and function lock and then hopefully by the magic of filmmaking, the light should come on. I can see it, but you probably can't, but that light is now on. So the function lock is on, which means that the function keys will behave as function keys. Also on the screen, you get a confirmation that's off and that's on, <clears throat> that the function lock is on, so that the function keys along the top row are back to function keys, which means, of course, if I want to adjust the volume and so on, then I have to press, press function and then the volume button to make the volume go up and down, as you can see it's doing here. So that's the solution to the problem, the easy solution at least. Whilst on the subject of Lenovo ThinkPad laptops, I came across the problem on this one that the connector for the SSD or hard drive is damaged, the SATA connector, if we take a look in here, 
there you can see that it's damaged and there's no way that that is going to work and I wanted a quick workaround to be able to put an SSD in this device for testing and what I did was I took out the wide area network card which was here took that one out it's an M.2 card here it is this allows you to put a SIM card into the laptop at the back here <clears throat> where the battery goes in there's a SIM card slot to enable mobile internet use without Wi-Fi but I don't need that so I took it out and in that M.2 slot I put in a small SSD this is a 64 gigabyte SSD which fits in the slot and seems to work rather nicely it came from a thin client computer from uh, Fujitsu and I've installed Windows on it it boots and, and works fine and the speed is okay this is not an ultimate solution because it's too small and I would like to put a bigger SSD in and the solution is without having to take out the motherboard and solder and a new connector is to remove this screw here and then pop out on that tab the DVD drive here which I also don't need I don't think we use those anymore so I'm going to take it out and I've ordered a caddy to go in there which can hold a normal SSD a 2.5 inch SSD which would normally go in here so by putting it into a caddy I can slot the SSD in there and it should work let's see if that actually works when the caddy shows up in the post it will be interesting to try so that's something to look forward to remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos bye